morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Darren St. George, and welcome to Sal's virtual road trip to the Lizzie Borden Museum. We are thrilled to have you with us here today. This is a very exciting road trip for all of us. We do ask that you make sure your microphones and your cameras are muted at this time. This way we can better hear Sal and everybody participating. If you have any questions, we want to hear them. Please do send them in the chat. We will be monitoring them over there. We still have a few people popping on, and as you're in here, make sure that your camera is muted and that your your uh, microphone is also muted at this time. Joining us today, we have John Higgins, our production manager for St. George Productions. John, hop on. Good to see you. Good morning. Hello, good to see you too. John will be helping and monitoring if anybody has questions. We also have very special guests coming to us from the Station Library. We're happy to see all of you could join us this morning. And as always, the man of the hour, we have Sal St. George. Thank you so much. And lastly, last but not least, of course, from the Lizzie Borden Museum itself, the operations manner, we have Jerry. Jerry, please hop on. Let's see you this morning. There hey we there. go. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Jerry. Good morning, Sal. So tell everybody where you are specifically right now. Specifically road tripping to Lizzie's right now. <laughs> okay. And how far away from the uh, museum? Are you? Uh, about 15 minutes. Okay. So uh, just so you have an idea, um, Darren, would you have everybody, I'm just going to ask everybody to let us know where they're coming from. I know they're coming from all over the country, and uh, I'd like to know where our audience is at this point. We know where Jerry is. Let's find out where everybody else is. I can already tell you, people have been chatting already, and a lot of people are from Massachusetts. There's a, a one person, Darlene. Hi, Darlene. Says she's about 20 minutes away from the house, um, but has not been yet. So she's excited. Another from Connecticut, Baltimore, Long Island, Ontario. Ontario is on is uh, is calling. Let's see. We have New I Jersey. I saw Texas. Yeah, Kentucky. Maine, Kentucky, Philadelphia, Virginia, Gulf Coast. Yeah. I've seen Israel. <laughs> Israel, John, you win. <laughs> the UK as well. So this is international now. That's Excellent. fantastic. So while we have Jerry, uh, before he gets to the house, let's talk a little bit. I know you have quite a few special events that you sponsor at the house. Can you explain what you're doing right now? We, we are hosting some uh, ghost, event, ghost hunting events and uh, night tour events. The uh, night tour events are events that when you stay at the house, you get an, uh, an evening tour of the house. It runs for about two hours, like seven and nine. It's a more intense tour than the day tour. It actually um, involves the basement and everything. There's a lot more history, a lot more paranormal involved in it. And the ghost hunts are basically what it is. It's We have equipment and uh very qualified people that run the equipment and been doing this for years. Uh, we, we do a paranormal ghost hunt throughout the Lizzie Borden house. Now, are you doing these on Zoom or are people actually able to come to your site? No, 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 this is a, this is a come to. Oh, nice. We don't, we don't do it on Zoom. This is, this is a, this is a in-house event. And has the pandemic affected you at all? Well, the effects that the pandemic has caused is we can't have as many people as we normally do. We can only host so many people in the house at one time. That's why. And, uh, you know, we're only, we're only allowed to have 10 people on a group. So Wow. And what yeah. were you customarily having? 20. Okay. So you've cut your... your we had your... to. Yeah, we had to cut it in half. Right. But... Um, some of the ghost hunts, the reason we can do the ghost hunts a little differently is because we can separate in two groups. So we can only have a max of 10 people per floor. Jerry, we have a, um, one of our viewers signed on and uh, sent an email about her experience visiting the house. Uh, she said that her and her husband, this is, it comes from Carol. So hi, Carol, if you're watching. Her husband, her and her husband stayed hi, at Carol. the house. And they were curious about it, which is why they attended, and then were promptly scared to death. They stayed in Andrew and then <laughs> Abby's suite and slept in the dressing room that had the queen bed in it. In it. And uh, my husband had to wake me up because I was sobbing with fear. <laughs> Do you get a lot of those, oh, wow. those visceral responses from guests? 
Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, we do get a lot of those responses. Um, we also have a a policy that is a no refund policy for leaving early. We've we've had the cook show up in the morning to do breakfast for people, and nobody's in the house. They're all gone because <laughs> they all left. So because people just don't make it through the night. So this is more than a museum. It's a bed and breakfast as well. It is a. It asks, it's a bed and breakfast. Uh, it is a museum. The museum part we run during the day. We run tours all day, you know, from 1030 in the morning till 330 at night. And uh, right now we're running them on the half hour. The big question I have is how did you get involved with Lizzie Borden? Um, I've been involved with the Lizzie Borden bed and breakfast for about 12, 13, 12 or 13 years. I've always been the IT person and the webmaster for them. And my IT business kind of fell because of COVID. And I've known the owner forever. And it needed a little um, management. So I told the owner, I said, look, let me go in there, <clears throat> tighten up the ship a little and get it running better than it was. And now it's, you know, we're, we, we're starting to get it in shape. You, you apparently have your own vision on how you want the museum and the bed and breakfast to proceed. Yes. I mean, it's, um, it was kind of running in an old mom and pop kind of situation, which is fine. It just needed, I don't know where, updated like how it runs how i put i because of covid we had to put all the tickets online because the no contact stuff we got to make it as much as no contact as we could so that's what we've done right i'll tell you out of the, it sounds like it's going to be a better uh destination at this point yes yes um people are getting responded to quickly now their, their response time is like within hours instead of days um, when people have, people have questions or you know, comments or um, need to do stuff, change stuff. You know, they're getting, the response times are much quicker now. It's interesting because the COVID, yes, uh, it, it's, it's caused so much distress in the country, but at the same time, I wouldn't be here, you wouldn't be here if it weren't for this, this pandemic. Uh, the pandemic is what inspired me to put together this program of going to celebrity museums and not just any museums. We're very specific about where we want to go and yours was high on our list. Um, I know you were very reticent to begin, in the beginning um, about, about our uh, process and we really appreciate you being here today. Oh, not a problem. Well, I, I was resident, resident about it because we don't allow our, you know, our actual tour to be um, filmed or taped or, you know, that's why. But mm -hmm. this, you know, <clears throat> this type of thing is not a problem. You've had and many at the house in about five minutes. Now you have uh, had many, um, TV shows uh, at, at your location? Oh yeah, we've uh, Ghost Hunters International, Ghost Adventurers, Ghost, so all the ghost paranormal people, uh, they come here all the time. We just had a four day event. It was a live streaming event from uh, a company out in California called The Dark Zone. And they're gonna be doing a live virtual event for Halloween um, at the Queen Mary. This for Halloween, they're doing the Queen Mary. Um, if oh, you go I onto saw our that website, on your website, yeah, if you go onto our website, you can click on it and get tickets for it if you like. I mean, they they did an awesome job here at the house. Amazing people, amazing people to work with. Uh, very professional. Very, um, they covered all aspects of the house because there's like a paranormal aspect, there's a history aspect, there's a true crimes aspect. You know. Um, this is one of the most famous or infamous cold cases that are uh, 
that are out there right now. Well, you know, to that end, we actually have a question for our audience. We have a poll question and we're interested. You, you'll see the poll pop up on the top. And if you're watching on Facebook, you can just answer in the chat. But from the, the, at this moment, do you believe Lizzie Borden is innocent, guilty, or are you undecided? So again, well, if you're on Zoom, you can chat. But if you're watching in on Facebook, just type it into the chat. <laughs> Jerry, I'm sure you I've have always, on this. I've always, I've always said Lizzie, the Lizzie Borden case was uh, the, in my opinion, the O.J. Simpson of the case of the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've, I've been saying that from day one. Oh, we have. And uh, why do, why do you say that, Jerry? Well, for one, she was acquitted. <laughs> you know, they didn't have like a, a ton of evidence towards her. And I think um, part of the part of the issue back then was I don't think anybody could have believed a woman could have committed such brutal murders. Yeah, I believe they put the axe in her hands and that just didn't fit. And that was the well, they never <laughs> found, they never they never found they never <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> My girlfriend caught that one right away. <laughs> Have we introduced Christina? We need to introduce no, we Christina. didn't introduce her. Hello. Hi, everyone. I, this is Christina. She's driving. I'm driving. <laughs> so, on Facebook, it looks like the consensus is that she is innocent. There are a few undecideds, but it, they seem like they seem to believe she is innocent. However, on Zoom, we have fifty nine percent that say she is guilty, thirteen percent she say she's innocent, and twenty nine say undecided. But we're going to come back what, to this, Jerry. What we're going to do is at the end of this, when we get to the final five minutes, we're going to ask the same question after we've taken them through your story and uh, see if they still have the same um, the same thought process. Okay. Uh, Moira would like to know, how many rooms do you have in the B&B? Or overnight guests, there are six rooms. Six rooms. All right. Very nice. And we are here. We're pulling in. Oh, all right. Then you know what? While you do that, we're going to launch one more poll. And we want to know, what do you find most intriguing about the legend of Lizzie Borden? Mm -hmm. And so is it, let's launch the poll, the macabre nature of the crime? I'm curious about her innocence or guilt. I want to know or what just, Lizzie Borden was like in real Borden. life, or I'm just fascinated by the icon of Lizzie Borden. So once again, on Facebook, you can let us know what do you find most captivating about the story of Lizzie Borden? Is it the, the true crime? Is it uh, guilty or innocent? Is it that you want to know what she was like as a person? Or are, do you just love the icon that Lizzie Borden has come to represent? And Darren, I'd like everybody to be able to see Jerry as he's approaching the house. So oh, we yeah. get an outside view of uh, where we're going. That's pretty cool. A true virtual road trip. And it seemed, oh, we still have votes coming in, but we definitely have a consensus. All right, hang on, guys. All right. And, oh, look, masking up. And it looks like the winner is coming. So last place goes to, I'm fascinated by Lizzie Borden as an icon. Next is that I'm curious about her innocence or guilt. Second place goes to, I want to know what she was like in real life, but by far, we are fascinated by the macabre nature of her crime. Alleged crime, <laughs> I should say. Alleged. <laughs> oh, and I believe... Uh, right. Sorry, guys. Um, I am trying to find my charger because my phone... Do you need my charger? My, I put the, the, my you have the brick? Yes. That's and I believe you. what you see on Jerry, the face mask he's wearing, that's the same that I saw on your website, right? That's the Lizzie Borden uh, face mask? Um, actually, we don't have any more of these. <laughs> oh, is there another style on the, on the website? Oh, yeah, there's a couple more. Okay, there's, another, there's a different style, but I, I know I saw those on the, on the, <laughs> on the site. And Fran so, says the mask on, is a hoot. Go. I agree. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh. Jerry, is that a residential area that you're in? Can you guys hear me? Yep. Are you in a residential area? I can't hear you. We can hear you. Sorry. I can we see the house? All right, hang on. I'm going to flip it around. 
I can't hear you guys. That's okay. <laughs> you were asking where people are coming from. We just got from Jessica. She's calling from Kansas, and it's currently snowing there. Oh, my goodness. This is crazy to think winter is going to be upon us soon. Oh, oh no. This may be a Lizzie Borden curse. It seems frozen. There, it there we go. There's hey! The house. I'm going to walk in the side where I normally go in. Wow. Okay. All right, this is the kitchen. Has it changed much? Um, no, we've tried to keep it in as period as we could. I can sort of hear you now. I don't know why it's so low. Jerry, when you do the bed and breakfast and you're making breakfast, do you use that kitchen? Hang on a second, Sal. Okay. Oh, okay. I think he's going to, there we go. I'm trying to get it on speaker. I got you on. I can only hear it out my little speaker. I think that's what's happening. But here's the dining room. We've, we've tried to keep it in as period as we could. The house is kept. Oh, sorry. I'm going to take my mask off because nobody's up here. Um, here's the crime scene. And oh, there's a famous couch. Wow. There's the... Sorry, I just got somebody that tried to call me. Is that the original? Um, I'm wondering why I can't get it off of. Oh, I'll just go with it. I'm just listening. Oh, it seems, yeah, Fran seems to know. Fran uh, is typing in it that it's not the original couch. It must be a reproduction. No, it is not the original couch. No, 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 no. It, yeah. We've kept it as close as we could. Uh, that would be really creepy if we could, if we had the original couch. <laughs> and what years are you looking at when you say, you know, you're keeping it period? What, circa what? Uh, 1892, when the, um, when the uh, brutal murders happened. So this is the foyer. This is when you first come in. This is where it starts. Jerry, I was asking earlier, when you have your bed and breakfast guests, do you actually cook in the kitchen? The original yes, kitchen? actually, we do cook in that kitchen. Um, hang on. I just saw the cook roaming around. There she is. Hi. <laughs> That's our cook. <laughs> What's her name? That's Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Good morning. Everyone says hi. <laughs> but yes, we do cook in this kitchen. That is an actual working stove. Oh, wow. We actually made it. Uh, it is gas. We found this in an old field someplace and had it uh, reconstructed. Beautiful. Oh, that's yeah. phenomenal. Um, trying to think. OK. Jerry, so is, take Hall a is Halloween your prime season, or, or do you have guests all year round? Oh, we have guests all year round. Um, our prime season is uh, June through August, and then uh, September slows down a little bit, and October is usually a crazy month. Jerry, we have a and few questions from the audience. They seem to, they would like to know, is there any, are there any original uh, objects in the house? All the doorknobs. <laughs> 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 actually all the doorknobs all the woodwork is um pretty original all the doors all these doorknobs are they were the original doorknobs that lizzie and abby and all those guys everyone that lived here uh they've touched them and i guess you used that hand sanitizer too 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the old hand sanitizers. Yeah, they had that so to keep the doorknobs clean. <laughs> Get rid of the evidence. <laughs> Alleged evidence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jerry, so, do, do you know what happened to the original objects of the house? They were sold at auction or sold off when uh, Lizzie Borden sold the house. Okay, she sold. It. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, she inherited her and her sister inherited. Oh, excuse me, inherited the house and uh, Mr. Borden's money. Uh, very which was a sizable was, amount, correct? What's that? It was quite a bit of money, though. Uh, she inherited about five million dollars. Wow. Yeah, back then that was probably about 30 this, you know, in our time. Yeah. $5 million is still $5 million to me today. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I take five mil. <laughs> they're ask, Jerry, they're asking about the outfit that you have on the mannequin there. Is that uh, something that uh, uh, Lizzie would have worn? Um, that would have been period dress. I don't know if Lizzie would have actually worn something like that. That's that might not be too uh, fancy enough for Lizzie. More so of she, curious, do you know how many owners a, have owned the, have uh, occupied the house? Um, that I'm not sure of. They're asking about her father, what he did for a living, that they, he left that much money. Uh, Mr. Borden was a very prominent businessman here in Fall River. He started out making uh, coffins, believe it or not. He had a coffin business and he had um, several other businesses. Uh, actually, if I can find one of my tour guides and I don't see one at the moment. So he was obviously <laughs> well respected in the community. He was actually a well-respected man uh, amongst the Fall River people. He was a very, he was a very distinguished um, businessman here in Fall River. Okay, what I'm gonna show you right now is uh, what Miss Bridget Sullivan, the maid, saw when she walked up the stairs. And we get to this step and if you see under the bed, this is what Bridget Sullivan saw when she came up the stairs and she looked this way and she saw Mr. Borden face down on the carpet. Wow. So she screamed and then ran up. And this is what she saw when she got up here. Oh, jeez. And according to what I read, she uh, it was Mrs. Uh, Borden who died first. Yes, uh, and that's a significant um part of the story is if she had died second her children would have received the uh the money wow so because she passed away first and then the father died subsequent all the money went to lizzie and her sister correct over here we have this dress was donated by elizabeth montgomery um, who did the very first Lizzie Borden movie from 1976. She donated this dress to us. She actually found out after she made the movie, <coughs> excuse me, that um, she was related to Lizzie. For those that don't remember Elizabeth Montgomery, uh, you might remember her from Bewitched. Yeah, that's what she's most famous for. Are there any Borden descendants still alive? That I couldn't tell you. I get people in here all the time saying she, they were related to her. And what what are we looking at right now? Oh, this is a this is Lizzie Borden's bedroom. Oh, <laughs> just a minor detail. Minor wow. detail. <laughs> and that was her sister's bedroom. What was their relationship like? Um, as far as I know, they were, they were pretty close. I mean, they were, <laughs> here's a, here's a little known fact. They were born nine years apart and died nine days apart. 
How old was Lizzie when she passed away? Um, 60, how old was she? In her 60s, okay. She was in her 60s, yeah. She, she died at Maplecroft. We have a few requests. Could you go through the uh, details of the crime? Oh, we can see you in the mirror. Hi, Jerry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, a tour just came in downstairs, so I had to get away from that room because uh, I don't want to disturb the tour. That's okay. Here, we had some uh, questions to see the actual images that Jerry was showing us as he was touring around, and we have some of those pulled up here. So this is the, bit, the bed and breakfast. That's what it looked like back when. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yeah. And the, uh, the poem. That's the mom, that's mother. And she was a stepmother. She wasn't, uh, he had remarried. And uh, the, uh, the uh, Lizzie felt that uh, she married her father for, her, for his money. And then there's the house comparison where we just walked in. Here's a little quote that I found of uh, from um, from Lizzie that I thought was kind of uh, tells a lot about her. Mm. You want to read it, Darren? Believe you can make a difference. In fact, you do make a difference with every single choice you make. Your money is your power, and each time you spend it, it's a vote for something. So make it count. I personally live and work by this African proverb: If you think you're too small to make a difference, try sleeping in a room with a mosquito. <laughs> very interesting that's her and her sister emma i was just going to say those were wonderfully inspiring words from lizzie borden <laughs> yes isn't it so and this is the, uh, this your is audio the front is page back. yeah this is the front page of the uh the fall river newspaper did we lose jerry no, we still have video. We just don't have audio yet. Okay, this is what she was uh, talking about, uh, what he was talking about. That's the image of the mother. Uh, she was found face down, just as you see her, in the bedroom by the uh, maid. So when he was showing us that bedroom that we just saw, that's exactly uh, how she was discovered. Uh, that's a picture of the mother on the right. That mother. <clears throat> And uh, contrary to what they said in the famous poem, um, they were not, uh, uh, the 40 wax is, is only part of the poem. In, in reality, it was 10 to 12, which I think did the job anyway. <laughs> they also found that this is her father, uh, a little bit graphic, unfortunately. Uh, when he was found, uh, they, they surmised that he was sleeping when he was attacked. And one of his eyeballs was literally cut in two with the, uh, the, um, the force of the, uh, it wasn't an ax, it was actually a hatchet from what I'm, I'd like to get that for confirmation from uh, Jerry once, once he uh, is able to get back on again. Can you guys hear me? Hey, there we go. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a hatchet and he was, sleeping because he had, they surmised he was sleeping because there was no defensive wounds. Okay, this is her, uh, the, the newspaper. I think it took a week before they arrested her. Is that correct, Jerry? Um, don't quote me on that, because I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's all right, that's all right. <laughs> I'm like the crack dealer who doesn't do crack. <laughs> Okay, we'll show this and, and the next slide and then we'll go back to Jerry. Okay, Darren? Sounds good. Um, this is the courtroom scene and there they are and they were using the skulls of Mr. and Mrs. Borden uh, to prove their case. And uh, just to illustrate it even further, we can go to the next slide. Mm. Okay, let's go back to Jerry now. Jerry, are these uh, in your collection, the skulls? No, those are at the Historical Society. Okay. The original skulls are there at the Historical Society. We do have some replicas here. Mm -hmm. So the, the guests are asking you to outline the um, series of events that, that occurred. 
and we we know that the mother was struck first and then the father uh what happened right after the actual murders um there was a a huge media frenzy tons of police were here um the 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 police that we hear were all um the ones that were on duty a majority of the police were at rocky point for a, a police event so a lot of people like the the chief of police and the, all those people weren't even in town when it happened so everybody knew the bordens this had to be uh, front page news oh huge front page news yes yeah it was huge front page news and i might have to run upstairs <laughs> the, soon, just because the tour is going to be running behind me and i don't that's wanna... okay let's do it go ahead <laughs> While you head upstairs, we're curious. We mentioned a couple of times here. Let's get rid of that spotlight. There we go. Uh, we mentioned a couple of times the poem about Lizzie Borden, and we want to know, how did you first learn this poem? Uh, Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. So I remember learning this poem years ago. And so was it? did you hear it from school? parents friends or is this the first time you're hearing it so if you're on oh, no, no. I, I heard this when i was a kid too because i grew up not far from uh maplecroft which was where lizzie borden lived after the the trials and everything after she she got her inheritance she bought maplecroft she purchased maplecroft and uh, i used to walk by the, the maplecroft house all the time go, going you know walking to school Oh, and I like one of the guests, uh, my, my dad told me last night. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a jump rope rhyme. I guess so. Yeah. A lot of nursery yeah. rhymes. It actually is a jump rope. rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, one of the movies that have been uh, put out lately, uh, it starts off, you know, people are jump roping to it. <laughs> Little girls are jump roping to the poem. So it looks like the poll results are are pretty even. Last place is 8% saying that this is the first time they've heard it. So very few people. Uh, third place goes to parents, told them, 22%. Second place goes to friends, taught it to them, that 30%. And school at 40%. Wow. Is the winner there. They learned it at school. And that's where I remember hearing it the first time. It was at school. <laughs> what, a what a bizarre thing to be teaching children <laughs> <laughs> it was part of his history oh <laughs> yes it's i guess part of history um but in you know interesting if we're saying this was the oj simpson trial of the of its time i don't think oj simpson is ever going to make it into history books for, for the murder trial why, why do you think this was so was this just very atypical of the time why did it garner so much attention because it was not atypical of the time. I mean, for one, it was a woman that was accused of a double homicide. And back then, um, women were never thought of that way, you know? They didn't think that a woman could perpetrate a double murder like that. A uh, question, was Lizzie's sister home at the time? Lizzie's sister was in Fairhaven visiting uh, friends. Okay. She so are work. there were there she other suspects home. involved in this? I don't know if there are other suspects that the police <laughs> per, uh, were eliminated or not. I mean, technically, I think, I think they only accused Lizzie because she was the one in the house at the time. Right. There was a cousin that was visiting also. <laughs> uh, uncle. An uncle, yep. Uncle John Morse. Right. But he yeah, was he never was... considered an act actual um, uh, suspect. No, because he had an airtight alibi. So we have a question that came in over email by Diane, and she's, she's interested in after the trial and acquittal, how was Lizzie received around the town? Um, she was not received well, you know, because... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When you get accused of double murdering your parents, you know, how, how, how do you think that would go well, abode well in your, your neighborhood, you know? <laughs> yeah. Acquittal or not, it's not, you're not going to be very popular. Exactly. 
So she and her sister moved into the new house and, and then they had a falling out and her sister left. Correct. And the falling out was because of? It's all speculation. Nobody, nobody really knows what the falling out was about, but a lot of people suspect that it was, you know, she, she was part of it or knew part of the, part of what was going on and that they had a disagreement and that's what was the major fallout from it. Okay. And the actress that they were supposedly uh, arguing about? What do you mean actress? There was a, a famous actress, um, Nance O'Neill. Oh, uh, yeah. I've heard something about that. I don't, honestly, that I don't know about. Okay. Uh, I've only heard, like I said, I'm not the, uh, I'm not one of the tour guides. I should be, but I haven't no, gotten okay. far yet. I, I've been trying to get the house in shape and running properly. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. So because but that is of, my next step is to learn more about the, the case and all that stuff. Cause I get these, I get, I get these uh, questions all the time. So Darren, if you go back to the slides for a moment and, and go to uh, number 16, <clears throat> the, the legend of Lizzie Borden, uh, go to uh, 16. Uh, it inspired all kinds of um, plays, movies. Um, here you see uh, Agnes DeMille, the great choreographer, put together a, a ballet about her. And there have been many, many um, uh, stage shows created. If you want to go to the next slide, Darren, there's another. But not only stage shows, but then Hollywood took it up. And if we go to the next one, Darren, these are just a few of the movies that uh, talk about Lizzie Borden. They, many of them are speculative. Um, I don't. I think. I think Jerry is correct. The best out of the batch is the next slide, Darren, and that was the uh, story, uh, the legend of Lizzie with Elizabeth Montgomery. Yes, that, in my opinion, that was the best one. Yeah, that was the yeah. most accurate and historical one. All the rest were, you know. Uh, people's now rendition of it, you know, what they think about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's all kinds of, and I don't even want to spread the rumors here, but we have a very, very knowledgeable audience. They'll start looking all this up online and uh, they'll, they'll, they'll learn on their own uh, about some of these things, but uh, I don't want to spread the, now I don't, I don't know if you can see the screen right now, uh, Jerry, I, but I have I have Elizabeth Montgomery in two different outfits. Is uh, either one of those the ones that you just <clears throat> just showed us? Well, see how the 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 blue dress. Yes. That is, that is the one that's on the cover, but it's not the one that's downstairs. It's uh, okay. the one that's downstairs. I think she wore a couple of different outfits during. I'm the sure she did. Movie. Yeah. Right. And aside from the movies, uh, again, if you want to search out The Legend of Lizzie Borden, that is on YouTube. You can watch the whole movie there if you wanted to. But if we go to the next slide, Darren, of course, there are many, many, many books about Lizzie Borden. Uh, oh, there's, ton, there's tons of books. There's if you so want many. something that's historically correct, it's called The Lizzie Borden Source Book. Would you that's go to the, the next one. slide, Darren? There it is. <laughs> yeah. Now, this book here, I saw there were two different versions of it. Um, and the second one is called 40 Wax with New Evidence in the Life and Legend. Of, do you know anything about that? Actually, no, I haven't seen that one yet. <laughs> okay. Hey, we all learned something. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, that, this, whole, and, this whole process has been a huge learning process for me. Running yeah. a bed and breakfast. Because um, uh, my other company... Uh, I'm a computer engineer and a, a web developer, and I never had employees, and there was a reason for that. <laughs> well, <laughs> speak, having speak, employees is like herding cats. Speaking of learning, um, you know, Dad, you were saying about our audience and how knowledgeable they are. I just learned in the chat there were questions about whether or not uh, Lizzie Borden qualified as a serial killer, and the answer is no. Apparently, Kim <laughs> informed us it requires three murders to qualify yes, as a serial requires. killer. It requires three murders for a serial killer. <laughs> I learned that on Dexter. 
a great, <laughs> great TV show. I just heard they're bringing it back. Are they? No. Uh, yeah, with Michael C. Hall, they're doing something. It's maybe it's like a movie uh, miniseries of it, but they're they're continuing something. Yes. Well, it's good to see him working again. <laughs> well, I loved him in that. I, I think he did a great job. Yep. For those that didn't get the reference, uh, Dexter was a um, I can't remember what network it was on, but it uh, was Showtime. a story Showtime. from what was that? Showtime. 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 It was it was a program that um, was from the perspective of an actual serial killer. He was a serial killer that killed serial killers. Exactly. He hunted down serial killers because he was a serial killer. Okay. And if we go to the next slide, Darren, in case anybody wants to get in touch with Jerry or definitely go on their website, their gift shop is there. They have many, many uh, unique items and the books uh, that we were just discussing. I think the movie too might be there uh, for you to uh, to to purchase. Yes, Jerry, have, any any words? Any... We actually have quite a few in the movies. Jerry, do you have any uh, final words for our group? Um, or do you want to show one last thing before we? I was going to uh, say if they want to see the third floor where Bridget Sullivan's room was. Okay, let's and explain who Bridget was. Uh, Bridget Sullivan was the maid. She was called um, most Irish immigrants were called Maggie. Females were called Maggie, so they called her Maggie, but her actual name was Bridget Sullivan. Um, I forgot. There's a there was a certain slang word for male uh, Irish immigrants too, and I forgot what it was, but. Um, that's why her name, that's why you'll hear her called Maggie is because- It might have been Jeeves, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Was it Jeeves? This, this was her bedroom? Yes, this was her bedroom. Hang on, I'm gonna unplug. Hopefully I'm charged up enough now so I can give you the third floor. So this is where, this was Bridget Sullivan's quarters. Yes, this yeah. was- well, I'm hearing myself. <laughs> now, was she the first to discover the um, uh, Mrs. Borden? Yes, that's that's Bridget. She was a handsome woman. And was there any? Was there any? I see in the Facebook comments there are a lot of questions about any uh, personal relationships with Lizzie. Um, as far as I know, I don't believe so. I mean, there's conjecture and rumor about it. Yes. That I do know consensus. that she was a pet lover. Oh, extreme. she was one of the biggest contributors to the um, the uh, Fall River Animal Rescue League. She was a huge proponent for them. Um, these are the other three bedrooms that were created up here. But these were all servants' quarters and storage up here. Was the were there uh, any were there any maids at home at the time of the murders? Yeah, Bridget was here. She was outside washing windows. So, so Jerry, just so I can ver verify this, the rooms that we saw downstairs, the bedrooms, those are the actual bedrooms that the bed and breakfast rents out? These are all the bedrooms I just showed you. Wow. Wow. So you're staying right in the middle of it. Yeah, this is like the third floor. This is where the uh, Bridget Sullivan, the John, uh, the uh, Jose Knowlton, and what's the other room? Oh, Sorry, had a brain fade. That's okay, but that's incredible. They're the third floor rooms. <laughs> See the 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 two downstairs bedrooms. The Abby and Andrew suite uh, has the two bedrooms. If you rent it, you get the two bedrooms, the two beds, and it has its own. Uh, on suite bathroom and the Lizzie Borden and Emma suite has two bedrooms. So if you rent that, you get the two bedrooms. Um, we don't like if we, if one person rents the, you know, the room for the night, like, we don't rent the other bedroom to strangers. It's all yours. <laughs> wow. It, it confuses a lot of people. It confused me at first when I was first involved with the house. And then there's the John Morse room. That's the most popular room because everyone wants to, everyone wants to sleep where uh, one of the murder victims was. 
All right. Let, before we end all this, tell us about the ghosts that have been seen in this house. Um, there's been astronomical uh, amount of people say they've felt things, saw things. Um, one of the most active rooms was the, it's the end of this hall. We call it the kids' room. It's the Jose Nolta room. Um, that's where we hear about more activity than any of the other rooms, but, uh, and the basement. Wow. Have you personally experienced anything in these, in these uh, spaces? The biggest thing that I've experienced was um, when one of the, I think it was the ghost adventurers were here and they had just left and one of the lead guys, Jeff, uh, or sorry, uh, I can't remember his name, it was a while ago. It was probably about five years ago. They had just left and he was, he's infamous for antagonizing the spirits and trying to make them come out and do stuff to, you know, make them um, show themselves, so to say. Well, they had just left and I had just pulled in and they were down in the basement doing this stuff. Zach, yes, it was Zach. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I just got a phone call coming in. There we go. Um, yeah, I, I just had I just had a phone call coming in. It's Donald, one of the owners. Um, I'll call him back in a minute. <laughs> but they had just left and left the basement, and I pulled in. I I think I missed them like by a minute. I pulled in, and the back uh, door to the to the basement. If you got a minute, I'll walk down there and show you what I'm talking about. As long let's as my, go. Yeah, that sounds great. Please. That's so funny. We as long just as my phone stays about the basement. Yes, thank uh, you. <laughs> as long as my phone stays charged. So. I think you just passed Anthony Perkins. I'm not sure. <laughs> well. <laughs> so, oh, these were the, the servants. This is where the servants lived, was up these stairs. They're kind of steep. So when people come and take the tours, it's uh, this place is, or say, the plate, the here is not ADA compliant. And it's because of the historical residence. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's Max. Oh. Getting a lot of celebrities today. Hi, yeah, Max. he's 19 years old. And here we go. I'm Maybe to have, have a black cat. So here's the basement. It's not pretty. <laughs> it's a working basement. We do a, all our laundry down here and you know all the menial tasks that we need to do. And that's the door out. I don't know if we can get this. Yeah, see, it only happens when you take a picture. Oh, you can kind of see it. Can you kind of see the face there? Almost looks like a skeleton. Interesting. Uh, against the back wall. Oh, we have yeah. uh, we have viewers writing in saying yes, they see it, and a yeah, lot of people that's... saying that Max is very cute, both on Facebook and Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Max has his own Facebook page. <laughs> oh, a lot of people, yeah, saying yeah. they can see it. Yeah, it's always there. Wow. But when you look at it, when you look at it with your eyes, you can't see it. You need the the lens. Yeah, for some reason. Uh, when you snap a picture, it, it definitely does show up. So, Jerry, do you, do you have many actors that you work with in your, do you do reenactments? Uh, we do a reenactment every August 4th. So when I came here, this window was Amityville horror covered in flies after Zach and those guys left. Ugh. Yeah, I pulled in. And that's what I saw when I first pulled in. Covered. I mean, you could not see the glass. It was all flies. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> and that, uh, I take it, is an unusual circumstance. <laughs> yes, very. There's the gift shop. Uh, we got people in there. Yeah, we shouldn't go and we shouldn't involve other people. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. 
you know, I need to have them all sign release forms. Yeah, we'd be. <laughs> <laughs> we're, Jerry, we're, but, uh, Max, Max didn't give us any trouble. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> But we're getting lots of we're getting thanks here saying that they love the tour. I, I can't wait to see the house. I love the fact that you get to actually stay in the physical rooms themselves. That is very, very special. Yeah, it is. Um, the place is quite unique. And from what I from what I know from the industry, uh, the hospitality industry is suffering because of. Of course. Um, because COVID. of COVID. So but here, luckily, we have a niche here, and the place has been pretty crazy. Jerry, am I off on this? Uh, oh, is he still there? Hold on. No, I'm. I'm. It's my. It's my phone. Hang That's on. I'm okay. gonna go to my truck. I just wanted to ask: Are you the only crime scene museum in the country that actually uh, is the the source of the, of the uh, actual crime? Uh, the historical society would be the other place where they where you can get a lot of the uh, the stuff that's happened. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. That circumstance, Pop, how you presented it, because I think of like the Overlook Hotel. I know you could stay there, but that's not a true it's crime. Fictitious. Yeah. 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 Or uh, well, the, the, I think the Overlook is more of a um, what do you call it? more of a haunted place than it yeah. is a true crime place. Yep, and then Amityville Horror obviously is not a place you can stay. So that's yeah. curious. No, the people that own that house, um, I've heard, all right guys, I'm sorry. No, that's, that's okay. okay. Jerry, you gave us a great, you gave us a lot more than I thought we were <laughs> gonna get today. And I know our guests are very appreciative of it. Um, everybody, if you want a great experience, Head on over. It's not that far from Long Island. There's there's all the information you need. Just go to Lizzie Borden to the Bed and Breakfast Museum. Yep. There, yeah, if you want to do the day tours, there's a there's a there's a uh, button right there for the day tours. If you want to do an overnight stay. Yep. There's a there's a lot of information here. A lot a lot of things to choose uh, choose from different ways to interact with the house. Also, while you're there, you can check out the gift shop. There's an online gift shop as well. And you can see they have the hats, but here are the, the face masks that we were noting earlier. So a different design than Jerry was wearing, but again, you see Lizzie on the side of it. And there's the books and DVDs underneath there. Yeah. Yep. So definitely worth picking it up at giftshop.lizzie-borden.com. You can also follow them on Facebook. They have the Facebook page. And I didn't know ahead of time, but Max the Cat is on here somewhere. So we're going to have to hunt around and share that link. When you find Max's Facebook page, we want to know. Um, you can also follow South St. George on Facebook. Follow us over there to keep in touch and learn what's going on. You can also fi find this and other virtual road trips on our YouTube page, South St. George at YouTube. And you can sign up for all these wonderful events at SouthStGeorge.com. And here yeah, you can the next road trip is going to be to the Rosemary Clooney Museum. Then we're going to the It's a Wonderful Life Museum, the Laurel and Hardy Museum, the Clark Gable Museum, the Phil Silvers Museum. We can't thank you enough, Jerry. This has been a real treat. Oh, this was, uh, I actually had a lot of fun doing this. This was <laughs> great. This I'm was glad you had a good time. Road trip. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we're ending how we began with you back in the car. Is Christina there? <laughs> she is. Thank you. Bye-bye, right Christina. Thank you. All right. Thank, you, thank you to all our guests. Yes, and thank you once again to Sachem. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Bye-bye, all. Bye. -bye,